All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the More Life Podcast. This week, we got a very, very special guest, Jalen Nelson, also known as Lick My Fashion, a stylist, creative director, fashion influencer, and educator. Uh, if you don't know who this man is, you need to know who he is. Don't worry. All the links and everything in the bio will be at the end in the description. Jalen, say what's up to the people, man. How you doing? Hey, everyone. What's going on? I'm so excited to be here today. Um, thank you for having me, Bart. Um, I really appreciate this. I love podcasts, so I'm like really excited. Oh, good, 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 good. This this is going to be a great uh, episode full of energy. Um, Jalen always brings it 100%. Jalen, I, I, I just listed off all like the official things that you do. <laughs> yeah. um, but let it, let, in your own words, what are some of the things that that you do what do you what when you meet somebody what do you tell them that you do um for the most part um i always say i'm a stylist first because um i do love to like make people look nice um and then i say fashion influencer second because um yes i'm a fashion influencer i love to dress up i like to look nice i like to look clean and i think um that is my whole spiel um and then i recently got into like educating which is actually super amazing where i started to sell courses and ebooks on just like you know the game of like instagram and social media because i feel like at one point i never had um, what, what's happening right now. Right. So if, if I can teach other people the game and the knowledge to get them where they need to be, that's great. So that's pretty much what I, um, do. I do a bunch of things and I know a lot of people will say, Oh, like, you know, focus on one thing, but like, why focus on one <laughs> thing when you can focus on all of your talents that God gave yes. you? So, yes. yeah. And you know what? A lot of people say that that's true. Uh, but I always tell people being an entrepreneur is like a drug. You, right. you can't, you, it, it, most people that are very successful don't just do one thing. They don't just do real estate. They don't just do, you know, marketing. They do lots of different things, right. especially when you have natural giftings, which you obviously do. You, you present well. You're a great per, I've seen your IG lives when you're doing your sessions and you're talking with people. So this is where we're going to dive, we're going to dive right in, you know, like of talk to us a little bit about like your journey. Um, I always, when I recently started seeing more of your stuff on my feed, I recently, I, I just thought of, I don't, I don't even know if you remember this. I saw you outside of Burger King inside the mall in Bramley city center. And you were like, yeah, I just got a really big check and I think I'm going to quit my job soon. And I'm going to start doing this full time. That was like yeah. maybe three, three or maybe four years ago. So talk right. to us about your journey from like, okay, I'm just working a regular job to, hmm, I'm going to decide to take the jump and maybe become what everyone calls an influencer and, and or maybe like a digital a content creator where you're creating content, gaining attention, uh, uh, helping and leveraging that attention you have for right. brands. Talk to us about that. Yes. So um, pretty much um, I've always been into fashion, as you know, but I've always been into fashion. Yes. Like, Literally, since the day you met me um, going to church, I've always been into fashion. Um, I think my whole spiel was I just wanted to make people feel inclusive, like people who are different or who feel like they don't, you know, belong. I wanted them Ooh. to feel like, you know, like they did belong because I felt like back then, right, people didn't really... You know, they, they kind of had a judgmental mentality when it came to, you know, guys in color and fashion and things like that. And people, it was just a very closed box. So I wanted to kind of open up that box when it come, came to fashion, because I, I just feel like, you know, if you want to dress a certain way, if you want to look a certain way, like that's OK, you could do that. And um, I feel like you shouldn't have any judging factor to it. And if you do have a judging factor, like who cares? Just, you know, own own it and be, you know, as good as you can be when it comes to fashion and just clothing in general, right? So um, that was my whole spirit. I just wanted to make everyone feel comfortable in their own skin when it comes to dressing up and looking nice and things like that. And then um, it actually turned into me being a fashion influencer to like styling. So I realized mm. I liked styling when I worked at <clears throat> Forever 21. I worked at Forever 21 as a visual merchandiser. I was there for about a couple of years and I just kind of um, studied the mannequins, styled the mannequins, make them look amazing. And I was like, oh my God, I think I should, let's try to do this on people now, like real people. So I did that and um, people loved it. And to the point where people like customers would come back every single time and like ask for me. And I thought that was super cool. And um, yeah, then from there I started like styling and then it just kind of took off for me. However, like, like, even though I was, like, styling and, like, things were taking off, I was still working a job up until last year. So, like, last year, June 4th of 2020, I quit my job full-time, like, fully. And then I decided to say, yo, we're going to, like, actually 
take this now and like we're gonna push and we're gonna do this full time so i've been an entrepreneur for almost a year like we're approaching one year and we're about to be like i'm a full-time entrepreneur right so yeah um i think in that aspect uh I feel like along the journey, like it was tough. Like, obviously, like, you know, imagine like working at a job for like 10 whole years and like you want to quit your job and you want to do these things. But like mentally, I just wasn't ready and I knew I wasn't ready. Right. So it, it just became a factor of like, you know, I just knew that I was going to end up being an entrepreneur anyway, because I just felt like every time I went to these jobs, I was just feeling like depressed or like I wasn't myself or I would find myself getting a job being excited about it, then quitting, getting another job, mm -hmm. being excited about it, then quitting because it, it wasn't about me getting a job. It was about me keeping the job. Like yeah. so for me, it was like, I would just quit. Right. Because I knew that this wasn't my journey. This wasn't my vision. So, um, in 2019, um, that's when I lost my car, my first one, um, it broke down and that's when I said, okay, Jalen, that's it. Like enough is enough. 2020 like you're gonna be an entrepreneur like that's what i said i manifested it and i worked extremely hard and i said you're gonna be an entrepreneur you're gonna get this new car and you're gonna just kill it like that's what you're gonna do like we've been killing it but like no we're gonna actually like, kill it kill it now like we're gonna be consistent in our craft we're gonna just work extremely hard whether it's sacrifice you know nights days whatever we're gonna work hard right. to be an entrepreneur we're gonna work hard to just scale so um 2020 came and pretty much the pandemic happened, right? So the pandemic happened right. and I was supposed to stop for the Juno Awards and the Juno wow. Awards got shut down because obviously because of COVID. So I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like here I am ready to like kill it. And now the pandemic's here. So I was like, okay, you know what, Jalen, let's not, let's not even get in our head. You know, we can craft for a couple of days, but we going we going to do something. We're going to do something. We're going to so, be all right. Yeah. So pretty much what I did was, um, I took some time. And I pretty much wrote down a plan, a vision, a goal. And I said, okay, Jalen, like, you're just going to use all your talents now. And you're just going to rock it out the park. So you're going to use your styling. You're going to use your talents when it comes to like, you know, computers. Cause I used to do intros and outros for people's YouTube channels. You're going to do that. You're going to, you know, start to educate. Cause I realized like, okay, like I have all this knowledge. So now we're going to start to put it into perspective and now we're going to educate. So 2020 was the year where I really blossomed into my own. Like I started doing courses. I started selling courses. I started just really teaching a lot. And then I started to get into my creative alternative. And, um, little did you know, like, June 4th came and I was already scaled to five figures in my business. So literally within six months of the <laughs> pandemic, I scaled to five figures within my business just from using all my talents and monetizing social media and being consistent. And then I was like, okay, Jalen, like, I think it's time to quit. That's when I made the decision. And I said, it's time to quit now. Um, I think you're good. And you know, in the back of your head, you're like, oh my gosh, like, this nine to five, like I've been at a nine to five for so long. Like it's the security for me, X, Y, Z. We see all these things, but the real thing is that I understood is that like Jalen, like you are your own security. That's what I had to realize. Mm -hmm. Like you're your own security. You're your own bag. Like you're your own income. So let's just make it happen. And I, the thing about me is like, when I say I'm going to do something, like I'm just doing it. And like, I don't have any fear and I just like to take risks. So for me, like being an entrepreneur is all about taking risks, like literally all about taking risks. And Facts. last year I said, I'm just going to quit. And I was like, listen, I'm about to buy this new car. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do what I need to do, but we're going to do it. So within me quitting. So right after I quit, I kid you not, I literally nearly tripled my income again and then i bought my full car cash literally bought my car cash paid for the insurance for the year all of that and i was just like <laughs> i love it i, I love was it. like oh my gosh this is crazy right because i just i never thought that would happen but when you when you actually put in like your goals and you manifest them and you write it down and you look at it every day and you pray about it all the time like literally things will start to come into fruition and that's exactly what happened and now fast forward almost a year later i'm like flourishing ever and i feel like this is my best year yet because i'm so into my creativity so i mm. feel like now i'm really into my creative like self like i'm really feeling good all my videos are going viral big blog pages are posting them so it's like now we're at a place of like okay like now jenna we're really killing it now and i think the goal is the main thing is just to you know keep going what i learned through all this is like you know you may have a bad day you may have a bad number day but just keep going literally yeah. that's what i learned from it keep going and 
that's my story. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. You dropped a lot of information just there. And I hope the people were paying attention in terms of sticking with it, not worrying about having specific a bad day, even, you know, encouraging yourself and writing down your goals. All these things are so important. Now, the one thing I got to say off the top is the reason why Jalen, this is like an outside perspective. I really think that you're so successful is because from day one, you've been lick my fashion. Yeah. From day one. And I think the authenticity is not fake. You're not trying to be somebody else. You're not trying to, you know, copycat something. I don't know how long I've known you, but you were young. You must have been a teenager. You know what I mean? And and then you were still then lick my fashion, Jalen Nelson. Yes. And today you're the exact same person. So when when you get to a certain level of success, it's kind of like you can kind of feel like, yeah, because I've been doing this and it hasn't just been a luck or, you know, a, a flash in the pan where with, I had one viral post and then after that you kind of fall off. So right. when you do something on a consistent basis, it's like, okay, this is for real now. And I think the secret sauce is a lot of times people try to emulate what they see versus right. being who they naturally, uniquely are who they're created to be. And once you tap into that, that's like a whole other world because now it's not work. Right. You don't have to like, oh, I got to put on this hat and I got to put on this nice shirt and I got to do it. Like, no, it, this is how I was going to dress anyways. This is how I was going to look anyway. This is how I was going to present this idea or this course anyway. So it doesn't right. become laborious. It doesn't become that hard. You know, so that that journey that you went through it was kind of almost like you giving your pers- yourself permission to be fully you, you know what I yeah. mean? So that, that now when it's like, okay, I'm ready to take that jump. It's not that big of a deal because yeah. uh, I, all I'm going to do is keep doing me. I already wrote down the things that I want to. I already wrote down the things that I, I, I set my goals on. So I think that that's like a huge part in like growing success and being an entrepreneur because it is scary for anyone it who's is. listening who doesn't think that it's scary. You know, I, I have a wife. I got two kids and it's all on me. But at the same time, you have the luxury of saying, no, no, it's all on me. So it's, it can be seen as a bad thing or it can be seen as a good thing as well. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even for that too, I think that um, what you were saying just now, I um, the beauty of entrepreneurship is what I really mm-hmm. love. Um, and I also, I also love the struggle of entrepreneurship because you learn a lot. Um, you really yes. learn a lot. <laughs> and I think people take the struggle for granted. Like they think that it's something that's so bad. And I, I, I personally love the struggle of being an entrepreneur because it teaches me things and it molds me to be better. And um, I, I wouldn't trade entrepreneurship for anything. I think it's such a great journey. And um, especially like, you know, like I, I just love working. I have a, a strong work ethic. And I just think that like coming into my full self in 2021, um, you know, I was blossoming in 2020, but like coming into my full self in 2021 is like probably the beauty of it all. And like, you know, I go through, listen, there's days where I'm like, I'm annoyed. There's days where I'm like, I'm over it. But (laughs) the one thing that um, I don't do is I don't stop. Right. And I think when we tend to be in a situation where we're like, it's not working for me, we just want to give up. And that's not how it's supposed to go. Right. Like, even through the times where you feel like nothing is working, that's when you should work your hardest. And I think Mm. that's what I do because again, right? Like not everything is going to go your way, but you need to be, you need to work your hardest, even when things aren't going right. Even when nobody's watching, even when people don't see it, or even when you don't see it, because when you don't see it, it's like, okay, whatever, but you have to actually see yourself there to manifest it. And even when nothing's happening right now, the thing about people is like, they think that, Okay, being an entrepreneur is great, but then they, they forget the aspect of like, sometimes it takes months, sometimes it takes, it could be years to get to that actual like level that you want to get into life and not everything is overnight. So when people are like, oh, I'm not doing this because I want to give up. Well, you didn't even give yourself time to blossom. Right. You, you didn't give yourself time to really shine, right? You didn't give yourself that time to actually grow and you can't stop something before you actually see yourself grow, grow right? So I think in that aspect, um, that's what I would say to people who are entrepreneurs. I just feel like, you know, if you, if you are struggling with that um, situation, understand that 
nothing happens overnight, but the goal is to just keep going and be consistent. Like that's, that's yeah. just it. Like keep going and be consistent. Like the consistency part the is how people get like bogged down with, cause it, it's a lot of work. You know yeah. what I mean? When you're making a reel or you're making um, um, a, a story on IG, or if you're doing stuff on TikTok, and it's cool, you spent maybe 30 minutes, hour and a half, two hours, and you got maybe like two or three. And then to think, I'm going to do this every day. I'm going to do this so that I have more that I can post on a consistent basis. That gets tough. I, I, wa- I know... Uh, um, I know that no matter what, like you have to do so many different things in a day. Take us through like the typical day with, with, with Jalen. Like how do you plan out your day? How do you like segment all the different uh, things you got to do? Cause I know like you, you go on IG live. I know you got a course. I know you do teaching and educational stuff. You also post your stuff. You got brand deals, all the different things. Walk us through like a, a regular day. Um, so I think for me, um, a regular day would look like, um, first of all, I have structure. So if anyone wants to know, like being an entrepreneur, you need structure. You can't just wake up and do anything you want. Like, no, like, you know, have, I go by an agenda. Um, that agenda has everything in there. Like it, you know, even today, like it says, you know, at six o'clock, I'm going to be on a podcast with Bart. Like I have yeah. everything planned out. Right. Like, um, and I think that's how I'm able to get things done because I structure myself and I give my myself time frames. So for instance, like, you know, in the morning, you know, get up first thing you got to do, Jalen, you do your devotions, you do that for like, you know, 35 to 40 minutes. And then the next thing you got to do is you got to, you know, answer your emails with your assistant. Then the next thing you got to do is you got to, you know, just anything that's scheduled, for the day, I just have structure and time frames, And then also too, like when I'm doing my videos, I have a, when I do like my videos and my content, that's just a full day within itself because that takes up a lot of time. So I just, it's a full day within itself. So it's literally get up, um, eat breakfast, have your devotions, go do content done. Like that's your day because it's a really <laughs> con- the creating content, especially as an entrepreneur, it is a lot of work and you do get tired after uh, yes. like yesterday. I did, uh, I created four videos yesterday. I came home and I just went right to bed because it's, it, it's exhausting. Right. But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how my day works. My day usually goes around structure and, um, I feel like I end off the day with either like quotes or like I just go and like do some research or like there's books that I read on like, you know, how to manifest this or, you know, how to scale to the next level in your business. I'm always reading yep. something on business. I'm always reading something on like, you know, how to make five figures or how to do this or how to do that. Um, I think mm-hmm. the number one thing is um, even throughout my day, I'm still a student. Um, yes. And that's one thing that I'll never give up um, because, you know, a lot of people, they're successful and they always want to be on top. But in order for you to be that, you know, that top figure is you need to always remain that number two right and be that student and always be willing to learn so um i think that's pretty much how my day goes to be honest how Um, often do you how often do you um film content in a week once a week so i film content once a week and then i film like four to five videos in one day so yeah and then you schedule that out to go out on different platforms or different yes yes correct so i will do so for instance like yesterday i filmed four videos so like now the four videos will be scheduled to go out this week on all platforms. And then next this week again, I'm going to do another day and then create for next week. So I'm always and constantly then you, creating. Then you also have like specific days that you make sure are always blocked off for like um, client work. Cause you also have right clients that you style, styled shoots, all those different types of things. Um, so I want, I want to make it super clear for our listeners who listen to this. It's like, there are, like, I'm a huge fan of what you just said, like, um, batch work where on like, for me, it's a Wednesday. That's when I get all my client work done. Monday and Tuesday, right. we have like the business marketing stuff that I have to do. And then Friday, we have like a lot of accounting stuff. Thursdays, all meetings, all my meetings happen on Thursday. You have to block right. it out. And I think that what you're saying is it's like the same thing. You have specific days. We do a content creation. Okay. Now I have a specific day where it's like I'm only doing like the style shoot or I'm doing client work or whatever it is. Yep. This is the day where I'm going to be writing for the courses that I'm offering or what I'm going to be saying on my live. I think people think what, like you said, you know, they, they assume when you're an entrepreneur, that's the ultimate luxury of freedom of time. Um, But with that freedom, there is so much more responsibility. And that's why successful people still uh, uh, structure their time. I heard somebody, I forget who it was. It was on TikTok. I don't know who it was, but they're like getting to a million dollars is very, very hard. 
But people who become successful to become a millionaire, it's not about what they uh, do to become a millionaire. It's all about who they have to become to become a millionaire. And yep. those, those, those principles, the way you set your mind, that's how you become successful. It's not about if you have the best whatever, you can have the best whatever, but if you're not disciplined or if you're not like doing the things you're supposed to be doing, you're not becoming the person who you are. It's like millionaire is a person type. It's not a product. You know, a person yeah. who's a millionaire is somebody who's disciplined, who was able to scale their business to that place. And a lot of people yeah. think it's just like, I'm only going to jump into it and I'm going to, you know, do X, Y, and Z and have investments and I'll just become a millionaire. And they forget some of the discipline things that you know it takes to get to where uh, they need to be like we talked a little bit about you know you having clients you having style shoots um, and stuff like that like where you're styling clients or even you I didn't even know this you were scheduled to style somebody at the Junos um, how yeah. do you get clients right like I, don't, I know many people want to know how do you how do I find clients how do I find a brand deal or how do I um, position myself to be ready to get a brand deal Yes. So the first things first is I get a lot of questions about that, like, you know, how to build your clientele and things like that. The, the first things first is if you don't have any clientele, like nobody's going to buy from you. So let's just start there. So if you don't have clientele or if you don't have proof that people are coming to you, buying your services or buying your products, nobody's going to come to you because a lot of people go by word of mouth. A lot of people go by what they see. A lot of people go by testimonials. Right. So here's the thing. Okay. I always tell people, which is why I always have an issue with certain people when they're like, Oh, like I don't want to post on social media or I don't want to post at all. The problem with you not posting is you don't have any content and that's not going to build your business. So I always tell people like in order for you to see clients or, or even touch a client first, you need to build your content first. Like that's number one. So getting into the studio, whatever it is that you're selling, whether you are selling a product, whether you're selling a service or whatever it is that you're selling, you need to make sure you're creating content constantly like to the point where your page is stacked so you look credible and people are not going to go on a page or instagram page or whatever and you have one post and they're going to buy from you like it, it seems like you're amateur that's what it looks like because they're going to look at you and be like oh well you only have one post so why am i going to come to you right so i tell people all the time creating content around the products that you're selling or creating content around what you're what you have to offer is key is n is number one first you need to be able to mm. build that and stack that and if people are wondering well how do i do that i always give them the two strategy i, I call it the two method strategy so i say freebies right so get mm -hmm. two people that you know that are willing to just play dress up or willing to just try your products or willing to just do whatever it is when it comes to your product, right? And have them constantly post on their page and you post those clients constantly on your page and you grab testimonials from them. That way you have stacked content from people who are, that you're not charging so that you can use those people that you're not charging to get other clients that you can charge, right? So yep. I think in that aspect, I want people to understand that you need to be able to post consistently. You need to be able to have something that people can look at you and be credible for because now it's going to be at a situation where people are going to be like, Hmm. They have all this content on their page. They seem credible. Let me just reach out because honestly they have all this content and they know exactly what they're talking about. But if you don't know what you're talking about and you don't know how to solve a problem and you don't know how to be a problem solver at all, people are not going to purchase from you. So I think the first best bet is to create as much content as you can create so much content and have your little freebies that you go to. Cause when I started styling, I was broke. I didn't have no money. <laughs> I, I didn't have no money. I didn't have no money to go get clothes and return them. So what I did was I used my entire family and I said, mama, I'm gonna go in your closet. Daddy, I'm gonna go in your closet. Sister, I'm gonna go in your closet. And that's how I pretty much, you got to work with what you have. So that's how I started. And I think that's the best way to, and, and nothing comes without consistency. So I think that's the best way to like start getting your clients, you know, at the top tier level. So yeah. A hundred percent. Like you, you gotta be willing to have something to show someone. And I think there's so many people I've seen on YouTube who do this where they're like, hey, I just literally go out with my camera and I take pictures of people and then I show other people of what I've done just for free on the street. They, Would you like me to take your headshot or maybe a lifestyle shoot of you? And photographers and videographers do this. There's this one guy, uh, I think it's Daniel Sheffer, and, and he went into like a restaurant, like a boba shop, and he just videotaped them making the boba, the tea. And then he went to like, that was for free, but then he used that and went to like every other 
uh, uh, bubble tea shop and just showed them what he made on his iPad. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll pay you 500 bucks for that if you make that for me. And it's like, see, you, sh- you show them what you can do. And if you don't have the clientele, offer it for free for first, offer some type of service, and then yeah. you'll be able to gain those clients. That's how you grow from something to something else. And yeah. the biggest thing that you said there, Jalen, was the testimonials. People need to see that, you know, when you when you uh, those endorsements, that that social proof where people like, oh, you rock with them. Okay, I get it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. If I need a stylist, of course, I'm going to go with the person who already had a referral from one of my friends or my friend's sister because it makes perfect sense. And now I already now when I go to your page, like you said, again, number one, having content there. Oh, he does this for real. This is not just like a game because what happens when people when people go to your page and all they see is like one post or like a sporadic post with no common theme, then they think that you're you're not doing this full time or that this is a hobby. And if you're dealing with, let's say, in your situation, situation a stylist or like in my situation web development like oh he's only doing it like you know as a hobby it's not necessarily for real then you're turning people away even before you've had a chance to have that conversation with them Um, right so knowing knowing what you want to be offering for people and then making that content is super key i think another thing too uh is going to be like your audience you know knowing who they are and speaking that language to them, don't come harsh if the demographics show you that, you know, that it's more female. You got to come a certain way if you're going to present a certain way. You have to, if you have a certain type of product, you have to understand who that audience is and cater all of the content specifically to that audience. Because truthfully, Jalen, if I look at all of your your stuff on your IG, <laughs> I'm just like, oh my I don't get it. I don't, I'm a fan because I know who you are, but the people that follow you, they're the mm-hmm. ones who are like, I'm like, I'm never going to buy that. You know, <laughs> if I wanted to dress how FedEx or UPS or DHL, I see yeah. all these different, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't get, but the people who, who love it are the people because they're the ones who you're really serving. They're the ones right. who are like, Oh, I see the value in what he's doing. And if he can, think creatively in this way, he's also the person that I want who's, who's going to style me for this event and for that event and for this event. It makes perfect right. sense. But right. I think people got to open up their eyes a little bit and kind of say, okay, who am I serving? Who is the audience? Correct. Like, Tell us about, I, I, I'm sure you know a little bit about your audience. Who are the, the target people you're trying to go after when you are posting your content on social media? So for me, um, I'm always trying to target people who are A, into fashion, of course, um, and B, um, women. Uh, Women, I have a big platform when it comes to women. Um, I think it's just like my personality and how I am. Like I'm very bubbly, I'm very open and like, like guys are like that, but some guys are not really like that. So girls just really cling to guys who just have that bubbly, fun, charismatic personality. So um, I cater to that in a lot of ways. And um, also too, I just cater to the people who love it. Like I know that these, um, a lot of people, they really just love, like, you know, when I do the inspired outfits and, you know, and, and, and also too, I, I, I always try to target people who I guess you could say in a sense are lost within like their business or just within themselves, because I feel like, there's so many people who have, have told me like, oh my gosh, like, you know, because I started watching your lives, like I feel better now. I feel good. I'm just trying to get to a, a place where, you know, people are going to kill it with when it comes to their business. Right. So those are the people that I target a lot. And it's like, I know my target audience, which is why I feed them what I feed them. And then they just love it. So I think in that aspect, it's very important, like you said, to know um, your target audience and to know what you're representing so that, you know, they can consistently come back and they know like, okay, um, you're feeding them that knowledge. And another thing that I do too, which is actually interesting that um, some entrepreneurs can follow is I actually go through my follower list. So what I do is I will click on my Instagram, like followers, and I'll just go through and I'll just kind of browse and I'll be like, Oh, okay. This person's into fashion. Oh, okay. This person likes clothes. Oh, okay. This person likes this. And from there, like if I keep scrolling and I get like a majority of something, I'll now make a post or I'll now make content relating to what the followers love. And that's, one thing I always do, and I think it's a big factor to just go, just take one day to just go through your Instagram following and see what the people enjoy and why they, and what they're up to. Do they have kids? Do they have whatever? Because in some way you're going to create content that's going to be related to them and they're going to be like, wow. And that creates more engagement. 
So um, I think that's something that I always do as well. And um, yeah, like don't be shy to go to your followers and see what they like or what they love. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. That's a major key alert right there, yo, because a lot of people, you, if you don't know and you're like, I don't know what I'm just trying, I'm just learning. I'm just trying to figure it out. Then you need to, you need to be, you know, like your followers, you're like the leader of that community. Right. So you want to make sure that you're checking up on them. You're making sure that they're feeling all right, that they're, they feel valued and that you're offering something that they want. Right. Um, and I think when you treat it like that, it becomes more of a relationship and less of a, you know, oh, just, I'm just posting to gain following so I can sell a course or sell a product. People like it's 2021. People can read that stuff a mile away. They know yeah. when you're being shady, when you're trying to just monetize something for the sake of monetizing it, yeah. you know, like, and they know when you're chasing trends, when you're just doing something because everybody else is doing it. Right. You know, I feel like, especially in your industry, um, social media influencers, brand, brand influencers, um, there's a lot of like just chasing the next wave. How do you uh, avoid that? How do you try to stay unique to your personality and style? Like when a brand comes to you, um, do they want you to put your flavor on it or do they try to say, hey, you have to do it this way, X, Y, Z? Yes. Yeah, so um, for the first um, question that you, a- that you asked, um, I think for myself, the biggest thing for me is Jalen, if you're going to hop on a trend, if you're ever going to hop on a trend, you're going to do it your own way. Like, Mm -hmm. that's how I always think. I always think, like, if you're going to hop on something that's popular, you're going to put your own spin on it. Because there were people who were doing, like, inspired looks, but they weren't thinking outside of the box. It was just, like, you know, the regular inspired emojis, inspired whatever, but no one's thinking about, like, shipping companies, you know, car dealerships. (laughs) fast food like no one's thinking about those things so right like no one's thinking about those things so if i do do something like i think like beyond like the actual concept itself that's and that's how facts. i remain different because even though that concept video is something that is trending people are going to still look at me and be like oh yeah no he's creative because it's still my own twist on the actual trending topic right so that's how i kind of keep that going on and kind of and like i'll just come up with ideas on my own like i'll just kind of brainstorm and things like that and also to like for brands, it's either a hit or miss. So if um, some brands come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I would love for you to create a reel for me or a video for me, um, but we want it like this. So when you're telling me you want me to create something, but we want it like this, I'm kind of like, I kind of step back because it's kind of like, you're trying to control the factor. Like you reached out to me. So let me have some type, like I get in terms of like the whole um, contract and guidelines, you know, some people just can't go over the guidelines when it comes to a contract. That's totally fine. But if you're telling me you want me to be creative and then in the same breath, you're saying, okay, well you can't do this. It's like, especially when you see my portfolio, you see my page, what I do. (laughs) Right. So it becomes a little bit more difficult for me to tap out of my show when you're not letting me be creative. And then there's other brands. Like I have a couple of brand deals um, that I just signed. um, And they were like, do what you want. Here's the timeline. Take the product, do what you want because they see it. They're like, we see the vision. We think you're creative. Do what you want. So, um, I get both, I get both, um, in both aspects and both trends, but I think it's just a great feeling to know that these brands in general entirely just reach out because they're like, Oh my gosh, like he's so creative. Let me see what he has. Like, let me see how we can bring value to our brand. And I think that's how, key. how do you, how do you build, um, trust with those brands? Because in my mind, I'm like, and if they give you creative license to do something, you better knock it out of the freaking park and make it really good because they're trusting you. And that's how you're going to build that trust that the next time they'll be like, OK, the budget's bigger. The, the products or the gifts are going to be bigger and the expectations are going to be bigger. If you're really trying to level up, I'm always like, yo, you if they trust, they give you a little bit of trust. You have right. to do really well. That's like your one shot for them to be like, oh, wow. OK, we we had Jalen at this level. Jalen's way up here. We didn't know he had all of this in the bank. Right. You know, like you, so, have, you have to build trust. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's what it is for me as well. I think, um, in that aspect, the reason why I'm able to have great trust with these brands is because I am outside of the box and I do, I do think creatively outside of the box. And I think, um, I always tell people like, do, you know, when you get a brand deal or just in general, like, even if it's free, do it as if you're being paid. 
Like, Mm -hmm. I think people have a different, like, you know, they have a different, like, set of things when they're getting paid versus not paid. It's like, oh, I'm not getting paid, so I can kind of just do whatever I want versus, oh, I'm getting paid, I have to blow it out the park. No, you need to blow it out the park all the time. So if you're not even getting paid, blow it out the park. If you are getting paid, blow it out the water. You know, same concept. And I think that's what, that's why I was able to keep such great relationships and then end up turning free projects into paid projects because people knew whoa like he's really like he's really putting his all into it like as if he's getting a check so let's give him one so that's how they think so i think in that aspect like anytime i do a deal or anytime i do a brand or even if it's like a gifting for a brand where they're like okay we can't do a paid partnership right now but we'll see what the offer holds anytime they send me something i'm always going above and beyond to make sure that the product is is put out the right way because I want to make sure that, okay, like they see this, like, oh my gosh, no, I'm going to keep sending him stuff. I want him to create more content. And then boom, it's like, it tur- it goes from that to just being paid. Right. So, um, I think the goal is to, um, always just never let up when it comes to a product, a brand or whatnot, always put your best effort into something because when you do that, the brands will see that and they'll like want to continuously build a relationship with you in the longer run. So yeah. Yeah. Game, game respects game. And Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer of whatever level you're at, that's also what you attract. So if you want to um, attract a different level of your business, like the next tier of pricing that you want to offering, the next tier in distribution, whatever it is, you have to behave like that because that's what attracts it. So it's it's funny. I, I tell this story a lot of times, especially to young designers when I'm doing like mentoring and stuff like this. I remember right. the first time I uh, charged somebody like $200 for a logo. Um, and to me, that was a big deal. But then all I would get were $200 logos. And so it's like, okay, the moment I raised the prices, maybe the first person said no. Maybe I would put it up to 600 bucks, right. um, you know, and then the second person said no. Maybe the third person said yes. The moment you start believing that I'm, it's actually worth $600, right. then all of a sudden everybody else you talk to is okay paying $600 because yep. you're confident and you've attracted, you've reached that level. That's what it costs. Now, exactly. at the, pr- the price that I charge for a logo to many people seems astronomical it seems crazy but i've never had a month where we don't sell a couple of them because right. once you reach that level you kind of are in that sphere now so i would tell anybody you have to behave as if you were getting paid the price that you wanted to get paid so yep. that you could actually get paid the price that you want to get paid. There's no two ways about it. If you act broke, you're going to be broke. That's exactly how it works. There's no two ways about it. But if you carry yourself in a way that, you know what, I'm taking this business seriously, then the business is going to take you seriously. And there's no yep. game respect game. So you have to show up that way. Um, I, 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 we have a few minutes left. I wanted, I wanted you to talk about your team, um, that you have around you that help you make all this stuff happen because a lot of times people assume that it's one person who does it all and they got like there's a lot of hustle for years you know people do this on their own they, they got to hustle on themselves they have to the visionary is in charge of holding that idea in their head and developing it and then eventually they have to share it and they have to tell other people and bring them along and cast that vision so that they can other people can get excited about what's happening and then they can be partners and then i also wanted to quickly like talk about how you know uh, um how when you're starting out or when you're finding your your way how you can really find your authentic self but first let's, let's quickly talk about uh, uh your team Yes. So it's actually funny because I actually never had a team up until this year. So up until, so 2021 was when I officially, um, got my team. So I love my assistant, Lexi. She's amazing. And I have an assistant creative director, Stefan. He's also really amazing. Like the, both of them are just like heaven sent because I never thought like I would have like a strong team. Like I do have right now. Um, because last year it was just me and people would be thinking you have a team. And it's like, no, cause I know how to really hold it down together. Like I really know how to hold it down for me because I think I was always very nervous of like giving, you know, certain roles to other people. But one thing you have to understand is like, if somebody's good at something, like give them an opportunity to be good at that one thing, give people things to be, mm. you know, to do and be good at and, 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 and perfect their roles and play their roles. And, you know, like, answering emails was just something that I just couldn't do anymore because I was just getting too many of them, right? Like I got to do some other stuff. So, um, you know, like I, then I hired Lexi and then I, um, Stefan came on board and, 
um, I think it's just been a blessing because a team really does bring you to the next level. Um, and I think when you have a team that, you know, like helps you do courses and helps you do these things and whatever, like it just really does bring you to the next level. I feel like the real way to scale and be a millionaire is definitely to have a team as well. Like you need to have people around you that also scale you. So yes, it's us. But when you have that team, you're going to scale to figures that you haven't seen before because now you're getting that extra help to push you to the next level. So now you can focus on this while your team is doing this. So, um, the team has been great. Um, I will never go back to just me by myself because that was just crazy. I don't know how I did it, but um, I guess when <laughs> you're really neither. determined. I don't remember. I wrote before right. I had staff. I right. don't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. I was like, what? But um, now that I have it, I, fa- I feel blessed and it's 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 great. So a team, having a team is extremely important. And I know that some people are selfish with their brand, but I promise you when you have a team, um, you will feel so much better and the help that you, and there's certain things that you don't need to focus on. Like, like give it to yep. somebody else to kind of take control of, right? So, yeah. Hundred percent. And I, before we go, I wanted to also um, make mention of you know since I've known you, Jalen, you've been like I said, you've been the same way. You know, being black, being stylish when everyone was doing baggy clothes and, and, and a certain style. You know, in the mid two thousands, you had your own unique flair, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention. Um, how courageous, how brave it is that you stayed true to yourself. And I think, like I said before, that's a huge part of your success. And I, I wanted you to have a chance to maybe speak to that for people who may be different and may not fit every norm that people might put on them um, and how people like, like you mentioned this at the very beginning, how we live in such a judgy world. Everyone has a freaking opinion about everything. Um, but I think there's lots of people who, especially now that you're, you have what over 80,000, it keeps going up every time I look at your page um, <laughs> uh, followers on IG. I think there are people that, a lot of people who look up to you and saying, wow, I see myself in in Jalen, I see myself as this person on IG, and there's not many people like you, we've talked about already in this space. People of color um, in this space who do it the way that you do it with their own unique personality, with no apologies for who they are. Um, so yeah, I want to give you a second, maybe talk to people that may be looking at you, say, "Wow, I didn't know I could be a stylist. I didn't know that that was a job for me as a, as a young black kid." You know what I mean? So I, I feel like that's super important as well. Yeah. So, um, I think the main thing when you said, you know, we try to like fit into this norm, don't (laughs) like, don't, um, I think, um, we get so caught up in wanting to fit in and like, what does that even mean? You know? And I think for myself, uh, I never tried to fit in. I didn't want to be like everyone else. I didn't want to wear the same baggy clothes like everyone else. I didn't want to do that. I just didn't want to do that. And um, I actually made a comment the other day and I said, you know what? I'm the good rebel. And my mom's like, what does that even mean? And I was like, I'm the good rebel because I will not do things of like the world and like I will like do things on my own. So that's what I mean by that. And I think in that aspect, like I just always stuck to what I wanted to do and stuck to me and myself, right? Like in terms of that aspect. And I think what I want you guys to take away from this this conversation in terms of being you is just don't ever feel like you need to fit in into something that you're not. Like, if that's not you, don't do it. If it's not something that makes your heart feel good, don't do it. If it doesn't make your mind right, don't do it. Like, I could even tell you, Bart, there's so many, like, brand deals that I had to shut down because it wasn't me, right? Like, And the average person would take it and fit in and, you know, do what the world is doing. But whatever you have to offer, like whatever you are, whatever you guys are doing right in this moment, understand that that is you stick to it and just be authentically you be cool, be humble, be nice because the the attitude, especially like with attitude, like, you know, have a great attitude, always feel good, always, you know, have that, you know, jump of joy because when people see that people are going to cling to you a lot more. And I think, that's the bulk of it. That's the reason why I have, you know, such a high following is because yes, I create dope stuff, but I'm also a cool guy. I'm cool. Like, you know, I'm a nice person. Like, you know, I, I greet people. I'm always, I'm very loving. I'm caring. So I think in that aspect, like once you, once people see how your attitude is and they see how you are as an individual, they will cling to you. But the goal is 
You don't have to fit in. Whatever it is that you love to do, stick to that. So whether it's singing, acting, dancing, um, whatever it is that you like to do, you could do that and you could be successful in it and you could stick to yourself. Don't ever feel like you have to change yourself to be successful. You can literally just be you and that is all you need. So, yeah. That is awesome. Uh, For those people that, if you have not yet somehow gone and found Jalen on Instagram during this conversation. First of all, what are you doing? <laughs> second, of, <laughs> second of all, make sure you hit a like and a follow, all that kind of stuff. Jalen, where can people find you online? Yes, you guys can all find me at Lick My Fashion pretty much everywhere. Twitter, Lick My Fashion. TikTok, it's at Lick My Fashion. Um, Instagram, Lick My Fashion. Pretty much once you type that in, you will find me. So yes, that is where you guys can find me on every platform. Awesome, y'all. This has been the More Life Podcast. Peace out.